Hi everyone, I'm Randy Rausch. There are some dangerous jobs and then there are dangerous jobs. Imagine an occupation that requires you to handle the most deadly snakes on the planet. And the reason you do that is actually to help save lives. We know a guy who does this daily. And what is amazing about his career choice is that you at home can come and witness his snake handling skills. Ready? Good, don't change anything. If there is anyone always ready for anything, it's Carl Barden, a guy not afraid to roll up his sleeves, grab a hold of the task at hand, and get the job done, minus a deadly mistake. You are interacting very closely, uh, repeatedly, day after day, with an animal that absolutely has the capability to kill you. But Carl is not your average snake handler, unlike snake charmers around the world that aim to heal and hypnotize while handling serpents, Carl is in the business of saving human lives. We are a commercial uh, venom production facility, a venom laboratory that really specializes in producing large amounts of snake venom to uh, make those venoms available to the pharmaceutical industry and the research uh, industry. This means in order to extract venom that may someday save someone's life, Carl must risk his own. You see, this venom laboratory is home to over a thousand snakes. Every day, Carl and staff pull out, pick up, and move to the table over a hundred different serpents. That is a hundred opportunities each day, some 400 a week, to get bit by a deadly reptile. There is irony in the process. And we always say that it's ironic that the anecdote, although like so many things, viruses, the flu, that the anecdote is actually made from the poison itself, from the toxins itself. And that the animal, as you say, that can kill you is exactly what you're gonna need to save your life if he, in fact, does bite you. Which raises an obvious question. How many snake bites has he endured? So I've had 11 snake bites in the past 20 years. 11 separate times a snake has found its fangs into Carl, sending him to the hospital fighting for his life. Remember, he handles some of the deadliest reptiles on the planet, from king to monocled cobras, to black mambas, coral snakes, to those eastern and western diamondback rattlesnakes, to vipers, to cottonmouth, to those copperheads, all considered medically important snakes. Inside these drawers, hundreds and hundreds of snakes. In fact, this is where the snakes live when they're not extracting venom. And when they want to get one of these creatures out, I'll tell you what, you better be ready. Reaching into those drawers will keep anyone on their toes. While the process of venom extraction can resemble an assembly line, Carl Warren's routine can be dangerous for his entire team. And in fact, there's some routine in what we do and there cannot be any routine in what we do because all of a sudden you have an animal do something that you never have, would have foreseen. And that can be a terrifically dangerous occurrence. What is really cool about this place is that anyone can come here and watch these live venom extractions. And the only thing separating you from all these deadly snakes will be a piece of glass. Behind that glass, you witness venom extractions. It's an amazing perspective for onlookers. You can't get an opportunity like this to be that close to an animal that is that powerful. They are opportunistic feeders. They are neither venomous nor constrictors. And Visitors come to watch, listen, and learn about snakes. Like Carl and team share their expertise daily. You'll even get a chance to handle some serpents. The Reptile Discovery Center is designed to educate and entertain visitors. There are outdoor trails to explore with creatures along the way to visit up close. There is an impressive collection of snakes, something these students from Jacksonville thoroughly enjoy. I'm taking biochemistry right now and I want to get my DVM, so medicine and how anti-venom and proteins and blood cells all work, it was really interesting to me. Seeing and, and talking about things in the classroom, but then coming to a facility where you can touch, feel, hold, see, uh, it really kind of brings it home. But it's really cool and really interesting. I'd love to learn more. Carl says he learns from his snakes every day due to their personalities. They unquestionably have personalities. And just like difficult people, or just like easy people, I have some snakes here I could literally probably pick up and put, hand them to you and they would sit in your lap contently. So they very much have personalities. 
and those snake personalities are never challenged. You've heard the term milking snakes. We don't milk our snakes. Our snakes are um, coaxed to bite into this covered receptacle and we take what the snake gives us voluntarily. I don't massage the venom gland. I don't squeeze the snake's head. I simply allow him to bite. Sometimes I'll ask him to bite two or three times in hopes of maximizing what he'll give us. But the snake decides how much venom he's gonna put in the receptacle. Coming up on the wild side. And when we have an accident, or when we have a snake bite, it is in fact a very frightening event for me. So what does happen here ah, when one deadly got, snake sinks its fang. fangs into Carl? It's painful. I don't know what the outcome is gonna be. We'll witness the steps this snake expert takes when bitten. Did we mention he's allergic to snake bites? So for me, a very minor snake bite, in fact, can be a life-threatening event almost immediately. And how medical experts stand by with the hopes of saving his life. Six of our staff rolling the um, antivenom and getting it prepared. All this coming up on The Wild Side. I'm in Deland, Florida, home to the Reptile Discovery Center, a place that houses over a thousand snakes, most of them deadly, a one-of-a-kind venom production facility that anyone can come and visit. Every day, Carl Barden and his team reach into their snake drawers and pull out these deadly reptiles. One by one, the snakes are moved to a table where venom is carefully extracted. And the whole idea behind a venom production facility to make those venoms available to whomever needs them. Venoms that will be used in medical research and in pharmaceuticals. There's cancer research going on with snake venoms, viral research going on with snake venoms, um, diagnostic applications with snake venoms. You name it, snake venom has a purpose, but most recognize it for its life-saving ingredients. What most people realize is that most snake venom um, is used to make antivenom. Antivenom, a magical life-saving potion made from the very properties that kill when a deadly snake bites. And nobody knows more about snake bites than Carl himself. So I've had 11 snake bites in the past 20 years. And these are not garter variety snake bites. Carl handles the most dangerous serpents on planet Earth. Everything from king cobras to black mambas to coral snakes to eastern diamondback rattlesnakes, western diamondback rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, copperheads, kaboon vipers, kind of a cross-section of what we call the medically important venomous snakes. Snakes not always happy to see Carl and his team. We have a cottonmouth in the back named Lucifer and we think it's him himself. You, you open the drawer and Lucifer bites the drawer, he bites himself, he bites the hook. Venom extraction is dangerous work, no doubt about it. One misstep or one miscalculation, and a snake can get the best of you. And nobody knows this better than Carl himself. Ah, Mara, you got, you, I got a fang. Carl showed us the protocol when he's hit by a deadly snake. When we have a snake bite, it is in fact a very frightening event for me. Mara, I gotta wash this and see if we got any venom. First step, wash the bite. Of course, time is critical. When you get bitten by a venomous snake, you have essentially become a living uh, chemistry experiment. We, you really don't know where it's gonna go. So Mara, I got some venom. This is a hot bite. His team springs into action, calling the nearby hospital. Hi, we've had an exotic snake bite at 2710 Big John Drive. The hospital begins to prepare. They know Carl well. Mm, He's good. faced death on their doorstep nearly a dozen times yeah. before. So we instantly know that it's Carl or someone associated with Carl's operation. So this, this is not a drill. This is not a, a non-venomous event or we wouldn't have even gotten a call. Tell him we're coming. I'm going to do my epis. We're going to bring our own serum. His own serum? Carl is so prepared for this event, he has methodically collected, prepared, and refrigerated dozens of exotic snake antivenoms collected from his own snakes in case of this kind of emergency. Carl has a collection of that antivenom that's already pre-labeled in bags that he'll bring with him. Benadryl's done. To make matters worse, Carl is a snake handler, get this, allergic to snake bites. I am allergic to snake venom, it's like a bad joke. I'm starting to get some allergy here. But in that uh, event, I'm unconscious now in about four minutes. So the snake bite becomes life-threatening initially from just the allergic event. 
Which means he can't get to the hospital fast enough. His team is so prepared for a deadly snake bite, they always have car keys and a cell phone sitting near the door, and a vehicle parked and pointed towards the hospital. So we go, we start driving, I treat the anaphylactic event in the car, and we often rendezvous with the ambulance or fire truck en route to the hospital. And that way, if I have to get intubated, they can do it. Knowing Carl's en route, have six of our staff rolling the um, antivenom and getting it prepared. Take him, to, take him to six. Sometime I regain yeah. consciousness in the emergency room, and at that time, usually things are well underway. Oftentimes, antivenom has already begun, and if I'm lucky, it's one of the doctors that has treated us before, or our main emergency room doctor, Stephen Knight, who's been on a whole host of our bites. So there's staff here, and Carl's wheel in there, and he goes around into one of the bays, and we're ready to leap on it. Oh my gosh, Carl, what have you done this time? Snake bites are becoming rare in the United States thanks to modern medicine. In fact, you have a better chance of being struck by lightning than to die of a venomous snake bite. So exactly what should anyone do when they suffer a serpent strike? Here is what Carl recommends. Remain calm and don't panic. Easy for him to say. Don't try and suck the venom out. It only works in the movies. No, you won't have to identify the snake or bring the snake with you. There is only one anti-venom in the U.S. Most importantly, call emergency services or get yourself to the hospital. A snake bite these days and times is a, a scary inconvenience, but it won't be life-threatening. As for Carl, snake bites will always be a threat due to his line of work, but he says he can live with that. We have a whole host of protocols in place to make this safe. I follow those things closely. I'm terrifically methodical in my work, and I'm very, very careful in what I do. The Reptile Discovery Center is open to the public. They perform those dangerous venom extractions every day for everyone to see. So check it out for yourself.